Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark provided by Christian Brothers University and Power and Tell. This month on The Spark, our theme is an active education. We'll learn more about a high school program promoting academic success through internships with local businesses. We'll explore a media company with an I heart for service and an elementary school becoming a catalyst in Frasier. We'll also have a special moment with one of our recent Spark Award winners. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way, so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. With the theme of an active education, the perfect example is education that works. I'm here with the head of school for Memphis Catholic Middle and High School, D. Hour, and also, too, the director of work study, Education That Works, that program, Ted Shrek. Let's start with you, D, and okay. give us an idea. When we talk about Memphis Catholic Middle and High School, just give us some of the stats for the number of students and overall kind of the direction of the school. First of all, thank you for having us here. Appreciate this very much. Uh, Memphis Catholic, our student population right now, we're at 275 students, which is uh, pretty high. It hadn't been that high in quite a while. And so the student population is growing. There's a big demand for it right now. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, our waiting list just keeps growing. It's finally gotten to the point that we've just cut it off. We've said, take no more names. We uh, had a record number of students take the placement test last weekend for the high school. So we are really growing, um, but we are limited in um, the number of students that we can take. So this is one of the reasons we're really pushing education that works. But Memphis Catholic is growing. It is part of the Jubilee Catholic Schools Network, which now the network goes from pre-K three all the way to 12th grade. So it's pretty exciting. And so let's go ahead and switch over to you, Ted. As you alluded to education that works, it's an internship program, but describe the program overall. Sure, so when you go to Memphis Catholic, your, and it's an education that works. As a high school student, we do have preparatory seventh and eighth grade, uh, but as a high school student, you're going to work. So you're basically hired into the school through the academic admissions process. So there, is, there are interviews and just a real understanding from parents and students of what they want to be and what do they want to do and are they committed to this unique model. So the model itself, we're celebrating our 10th year here in Memphis. And so if you're in ninth grade all the way through 12th, you have the opportunity to go to work one day a week um, and then one Friday a month as well. So and they're literally the, going to work. I mean, they're going to a business that's a partner with you as an internship opportunity. Literally going to work. And um, unlike some models that you might see where you get out of school at 2 o'clock and maybe earn a credit or just earn some extra money, when on this morning, the seniors woke up early. We're in the school by 7.20 in the morning where our normal academic day doesn't start until 8. Got one on one of our four buses, all of them, and rolled out across Memphis and Shelby County. Whether that was to a school, to be a teacher assistant or an office worker, um, to AutoZone's corporate headquarters, FedEx corporate, um, doctor's offices. And so when they go to work, they're paired with one or more supervisor mentors. So it, there is the mentorship aspect to, yes, you're a, you're a teenager. Some, uh, some, like any labor pool, know very well what they want to do. And some are just your average teenager 
um, facing all the struggles. We are a mirror of Memphis. We are truly a mirror of Memphis. We get from all socioeconomic and demographic, um, if you wanted to put labels on. But um, so they're going out and they're finding out what their value is. And they're finding out that at an, early age. at an early age, but inherently we all have the same value. And so just by the fact that you show up at your job that day is getting across to a young person, 14 to 18 years old, that you have nothing to prove as a person. You have inherent value. Now we want to see how you can develop task-based, but also communications, all those soft skills that all the, all the businesses throughout Memphis as well as the United States and the world are They're saying, we're getting a disconnect now. Um, people are coming out of college saying with this, give me, I've earned, and we're going to a student that might never have the opportunity to walk into the International Paper Towers. But I want to yeah, yeah. touch on the fact that this is important because, one, it's allowing them to grow professionally, personally, but also, two, this money that they're earning goes back to help them with scholarship opportunities. And that's, that, to me, is the important piece of this is you've got the growth, but you also, they're literally helping to fund their education. And on your end, that's a big piece of what you need is the businesses to kind of understand this is an internship opportunity, but it funds their education. It's a huge piece, and that's part of what keeps Memphis Catholic going. We are a jubilee school. It takes money to run the school. We're talking about uh, low to moderate income families coming in for a private Catholic education. So they need help um, financially in order to make things happen. What the internships do, I'm just gonna use Baptist Hospital as the example. Um, Baptist Hospital will pay us $5,000 towards the tuition and that student, for that one student, that one student will go to Baptist, as Ted was describing, and be an intern there and get received a mentorship. Now, part of the piece that's important to me right now is we're looking to grow. Uh, we have a huge waiting list. We can't take a student off the waiting list unless, unless there's an internship available right. for that student. And that's why we're out going out to, to businesses. We need help. We need you to step up because these mentorships, these internships are incredible. And just to give you a little bit of um, the statistics, because we talked about that a little mm -hmm. bit ago, of our students since ETW started, this is the 10th year, so we have nine years of statistics. Our graduation rate, 99.2%. Wow. That's incredible. How you can compare that to any school across the country. College attendance rate, and I say college attendance rate, we're talking two year, four year, trade school, military. Our acceptance or acceptance rate or those continuing to move on, 98.6%. Wow. So our kids are, are not only receiving an excellent high school education, but they're moving on. And uh, we heard the term taxpayers. These folks are taxpayers. These folks are, we're training them for the future. So that's pretty cool. But we need the internships for them. Well, make sure and definitely check out Education That Works. It's a great opportunity for your business to help be a catalyst to give back, but to literally transform through education our community. So thanks for all you guys do. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank, Thank you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. We'll say they have an iHeart for service. I'm here with the regional market president for iHeart Media, Morgan Bohannon. And when you talk about iHeart Media, you guys have seven local radio stations. Let's start there. Right. Give us a little description on seven radio stations and iHeart Media here in Memphis. Well, it's a lot to uh, oversee, I can tell you that for sure. But uh, seven brands, uh, seven distinct areas of the population that we satisfy, although four of them are targeted at the African-American uh, audience. They range in age from uh, your 12-year-old uh, to uh, the 65-year-old that uh, has been in touch with WDIA and its heritage for the past 75 years. So. And WDIA, let's start there. I mean, that's a legacy landmark for Memphis, but obviously for iHeart as well. No doubt. I mean, it's a, it's a, WDIA holds a lot of uh, cachet in the industry across the world. A lot of people don't, don't realize that WDIA was actually the the model by which many African-American radio stations were crafted around the country. And if it hadn't been for DIA, I don't know where that uh, genre of music would have gone, but their, their commitment to service uh, has been a long-standing um, um, 
uh, pillar of that radio station for many, many years. And it's an honor for me to, as a native Mippian, come back after having left for a while, come back and, and have the opportunity to, to oversee that ship. So you have WREC, News Radio 600 WREC. That's right. You have Hallelujah, That's right. Rock 103. So, I mean, to your point, it covers a very broad spectrum musically, genre-wise, but also, too, I mean, just with the demographics here in Memphis, in the Mid-South. And it gives us all these service opportunities, you know. Part of the things that, 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 that we, as a trying to be a good corporate citizen in Memphis, we try to, to give back as often as we can and make a difference. And because we have such a diversified portfolio of assets, we have all these opportunities to satisfy almost any sort of need uh, within the community, whether it be a veterans effort for Rock 103 or a spiritual based effort for Hallelujah FM, we can, we can cover it top to bottom. How many viewers or not how many listeners, I should say, um, overall do you touch here in the Mid-South? Somewhere north of 750,000 a week. Wow. It's a massive reach. And to your point, you know, the service aspect is huge. So you have administration, you have sales team, you have um, on-air personalities. So talk about that aspect is, you know, I see many times the on-air personalities, they're out serving as MCs in the community, doing nonprofit events, they're volunteering, they're out doing fundraising, they're heavily engaged in the community. So not only are you using the microphone to be able to be a conduit to push out good stories and engagement opportunities, but they themselves physically are involved. A lot of that is about the heritage of our staff. You know, you look from top to bottom on our radio stations, Bobby O.J. on WDIA has been a name and a, a air personality in this town for 30 years. Bev Johnson the same way on WDIA. We've got any number of other personalities across the landscape uh, uh, that, that have deep roots and heritage. Most of them are native Memphians. Uh, they have relationships in uh, a lot of places that, that the radio stations are plugged into and a lot of places that the radio stations aren't plugged into, that they are just plugged into. So it gives us an opportunity to, to our, our biggest challenge oftentimes is to categorize and prioritize what we want to get involved in because we don't want to sp uh, spread ourselves too thin right. that we don't have any impact. Makes so sense. It's a, that's one of our biggest challenges because, as you know, there's no lack of need uh, across the, the Mid-South region. Talk about you personally. One of the things I love is, you alluded to it, is you're a native Memphian. You went away. You came back home. You've taken on these seven radio stations. Um, just knowing you and, and obviously kind of even pre with iHeartMedia, you've been instrumental in really making sure that you focus on positives and engagement. And you yourself are a perfect example where you're serving as board chair with Junior Achievement. Talk about that aspect, especially related to education and the importance of it for you well, personally. Well, when I came back, I, I, I was looking for areas where I personally could get involved and then very well uh, involve our radio stations. And one of the places that popped up pretty quickly was was Junior Achievement. They have uh, J.A. Biztown downtown mm -hmm. on Madison Avenue, which is an excellent program that teaches uh, fifth graders financial literacy. And they go through this uh, curriculum that's both in school and uh, out of school, uh, which gives them uh, the student an opportunity to not only learn uh, the the aspects of running a business in a classroom environment, but then to go and practice in a active environment at JA Biztown, which which just increases the retention. And when I first came back, there, the, the JA Biztown is is a virtual who's who of M Memphis business as it regards the shops there. Because you've you got know, Smith and Nephew, there's an auto slime, zone, right, there's, and FedEx. There's an auto zone shop. There's a Grizzly shop. First Tennessee Bank's heavily engaged. And I Heart Media Radio well, they Station, had this, right? They had this broadcast center, and it was just kind of sitting there with no one actively engaged. And I asked the question of why that would be, and the next thing you know, it's an iHeart broadcast facility. <laughs> yeah, but it's really cool, because I mean, that's the most popular one, because the kids get to go in there, and Absolutely. they get to choose the music, and it's playing, and it's sure. pumping through the whole city. There's two things fifth graders want to be. One is a DJ, and the other one is an NBA basketball player. Well, there you but go. But the DJ is always, you can ask Larry Colbert, it's always the number one uh, position. Everybody wants to work at the radio station. But I always say on my end is, you know, when people ask what's one of the important things to really get involved with, education, because it's so critical to the foundation of our youth, those are our leaders, but giving them a whole new opportunity to see a future for themselves and their family. Talk about why it's so important for you and the radio stations to be involved in education. It's critical uh, that we take tax-dependent households and turn them into tax-producing uh, uh, households. It's important that we that we change the generational slide of poverty, and in in that environment, all boats will float. 
uh, in that rising tide, we will all do better. Companies like mine have a massive investment in this community, and it's important for us to, to, to work hard to better it. And um, uh, JA and many of the other things that we're involved in, but JA specifically for me, because of the financial literacy uh, portion of that, it's just such basic information that you and I take for granted that these kids have never been exposed to. And uh, if we can change the next generation of how they, how they bank and how they are financially responsible, it's going to have a, a dramatic impact on our workforce development, on our overall level of education across the marketplace, and will make Memphis just a better place to live. And, and our motto at iHeart is anything that's good for Memphis is good for us. Well, I greatly appreciate all you do, not only on the radio front to spread the good, but also on the physical engagement. So make sure and check out, they have an app, iHeartRadio, extremely popular, 246 million around the world are tuning into the app, but make sure and check it out, iHeartMedia. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. The Spark Awards annually recognize and celebrate individuals and organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the community. Our most recent winner in the Individuals Youth category is Nakia Brown, a student at Power Center Academy who discovered her passion for giving when she crafted a book drive to help young kids and their families. Um, I'm 17 years old and I go to Power Center Academy High School. When I was younger, my parents, they would make me go to my room, get a book, and make me read it to them. And I realized as I got older, like that helped me in the long run. I would always be ahead on reading levels. I would always be ahead on reading tests and stuff like that. So I figured why not help other children and help them get ahead in life, like my parents helped me. And so you've been able to, on your end, be able to bring all these sides together to donate a lot of books. Yeah. So talk about some of the things that you've been able to accomplish. Um, well, my first project, I went to Kip Elementary and I donated, I think, over 100 or 200 books to about 50 families to help them out with their summer reading program. And my second project, I helped out Power Center Elementary, and we raised over 300 books. I did a book drive at my high school, and we raised over 300 books to donate to the elementary to start them in the library since they were just starting off. So 300 books. So talk about the logistics of pulling all that. How did you, how are, especially you know, as, a, as a youth, to be able to, to get people and convince them and say, hey, I want you to do this. Talk about how you were able to pull all these pieces together. Um, well, it was difficult at first because a lot of students didn't really want to donate the books. And then we talked about different incentives with my principal to see what they would do. And then we talked about giving them a dress out pass. And then they got to choose which school they wanted to go to. So they got a dress out pass and then they chose Power Center Elementary since it was just starting. So they figured it would be cool if we just donated high schools to elementary. And all the students, when they started bringing in books, it started coming in real heavy. Some students, all we asked for was three books from each student, but some students would bring in boxes of books. So we were real amazed to see how involved they were becoming. And outside of books, you've also raised money, over $1,000, correct? Yes, I'm currently raising money along with my high school. They're helping me out once again. They're just like my rock when it comes to Drive Literacy Memphis. They're helping me raise money in order to help out Crump Elementary because they asked me to come to their school to help out their children as well. So talk about community service. What, what have you learned in the process? I mean, obviously on your end, bringing the school together, rallying for the right cause, focused on literacy. What have you learned in the process? Um, in the process, I learned that it's real easy to change a life. You could say one thing, you could change someone's life, and you could make someone happy just by doing one simple thing. And when I gave the books to the children at KIPP, just to see all the smiles on their faces, because it was books that they wanted but couldn't afford, and it just made my day. They're an elementary school becoming a catalyst in Fraser. I'm here with the head of school for New Hope Christian Academy, Stephen Steiner. So 20 years started not in Fraser, but now you're in Fraser. So let's start with some context. Give us a little bit of the history for New Hope Christian Academy. Well, we began 20 years ago uh, serving primarily low-income families, uh, providing a, a, a college prep foundational option for families in downtown Memphis, serving uh, primarily uh, students and families from Lauderdale Court 
and Hurt Village and Claiborne Foot Homes. Uh, and what we found is that in the late 90s, downtown Memphis had this, began this rebirth. And uh, a lot of the families um, who were living in those public housing areas found their homes uh, being pulled away from them. Uh, and uh, those public housing areas no longer existed anymore. Uh, through Section 8 housing of many of our families uh, that began at our school, moved to the Fraser area in North Memphis and the outlying areas north of downtown. And so uh, we uh, made that decision uh, back in the day to follow where our families were. Nice. And uh, providing a, a great education for them, for their kids. And let's start on that front. So you've got a beautiful building. It's right in the heart of Frazier. Mm. You have, and we'll talk about it in a second, but a garden, a forest. I mean, it's pretty mm. rare for a school to have a forest, but you have a forest. Yeah. Um, but so much of it is built around a culture of excellence. And I've gotten in and uh, seen the students. And But talk about from your perspective, share with the viewers a little bit of what makes New Hope different in terms of the culture that you're providing for education. Well, I mean, we're an elementary school, uh, so we... Uh, I think beginning there, uh, it's a deep, deep love for kids uh, that starts very early with our three-year-old program and goes all the way through sixth grade. Uh, and while we uh, are certainly focusing on the academics, uh, we, we like to weave in the relationship through that and with uh, our, through our entire curricular program. Uh, so you mentioned the garden, our, our urban farm uh, and our urban forest. Uh, we've created a maker space where our kids are using, um, using technology, doing 3D printing, making things. I mean, how cool that, is that? You have a, it's, a it's 3D cool. printer right there for the kids. We do, yes. And, uh, you know, the neat thing, I think the thing that we're focused on is getting kids to own their own education. We, we want our kids to be uh, leaders of their own learning, if you will, and uh, we want them to be hands-on involved. and. Uh, not only just for the sake of, uh, of that learning, but seeing how it impacts themselves and other people. Uh, we have a very, very much an outward focused school uh, and wanting our kids to see uh, that they're, they have an impact on culture and uh, their neighborhoods and, uh, and making Memphis a better place. So the theme is an active education, and you, I mean, as you alluded to, you have a, a garden, you have a forest, and the kids are going out there in nature, and you're helping them kind of design even what it looks like with the past. Yeah. Talk about activity. Talk about experiential learning. Yeah, we like to get our kids out in the farm, uh, and uh, it's an acre on the corner of uh, Clifton and University Street uh, where our kids help to uh, create the soil, till the soil, uh, plant the plants, they cultivate it, they weed it. Uh, they, they get out there and they see the, over time, uh, the impact that their work is having. Uh, just and to they the get north. to taste the fruits of the they do. too, right? And they do, and they do. <laughs> uh, well, we, we, uh, so some of the fruits of their labor, if you will, uh, make their way into our cafeteria, uh, as well as into uh, their own homes, because we, we sell some of that produce, or make it available, rather, for uh, families and anyone in the community who wants to come by uh, once a week. Uh, they can come and pay as, they, pay as you want, pay as you can. Uh, but on the other side to the north is our urban forest. And, and we were fortunate enough to acquire six acres of forested land, undevelopable, uh, that was coupled with our, uh, an acre that we already had in place. And uh, it's a, it, is a, it is a forest and that we've created a path that goes through there. Uh, many of our students, from where they come from, they don't have the opportunity uh, to, to get outside to engage in creation. Um, and I think that also speaks to just society in general, that more and more kids spend more and more time in front of devices uh, and uh, using electronics that I think we've overlooked something that's very, very important is getting kids outside uh, and learning together, uh, challenging uh, one another, trying, failing, all those sorts of things. And we feel like our urban form, a farm and our forest are two ways that we get to really build that out in kids. So talk about the stat 100%. 100%. Well, we're proud of the fact uh, that 100% of our kids that finish our sixth grade go on to graduate from high school. And uh, while uh, I would hope that that could be spread uh, to throughout Frazier, throughout Memphis, throughout our, our country for that matter, uh, is that everyone who finishes uh, elementary and gets a good foundational elementary experience uh, are prepared to go and graduate from high school. Creates more question, opportunities for them. To me, is using you guys as a catalyst. Talk about how that matters and why that matters to Fraser. Well, there, Fraser is a place that uh, many folks don't happen upon. You know, just where it's physically located, 
And uh, there are, there's a lot of reform happening in education in our nation, but there's a bullseye right on Memphis. And if you drill down even farther, it's right on in, in Frazier. And uh, we feel like we're just one of many good things that are happening in the community. Uh, and uh, we want to be uh, a magnet to bring people to a place that they wouldn't normally uh, happen upon. Uh, so there are good things that are happening in Frazier, and uh, we want to just be say a part that of that. We're, we're one of those things. Well, I definitely encourage you, make sure, take a tour, New Hope Christian Academy, see the good that's taking place right here in the Mid-South, but definitely being a catalyst for Frazier. I greatly appreciate all you do. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate it. We've talked about it in the past, but our city has one of the largest under 18 populations in America. That can be a challenge or it can be an amazing opportunity if we get it right. As we saw today, Memphis is focused on getting it right. And there are countless individuals, organizations, companies, and schools all working together to give students an opportunity to succeed. Memphis Catholic Middle and High School is providing students an active education not only in the classroom, but out in the community with internships that prepare them for college and a career. The team at iHeartMedia is actively engaged with our youth through programs like Junior Achievement. And New Hope Christian Academy is proving that a school's culture of excellence can transcend the students and families and lead to community-wide transformation. Thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit thesparktv.org. We look forward to seeing you next month, and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believed in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of The Spark.